Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Let's now begin off the press uh, with the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Adamu's journey cut short. Baba, 58, named new IGP. Eboy killings. Indigents raised the alarm over alleged escape of 55 suspects in police custody. ASUP, judicial workers, commenced nationwide strike. Nine killed, dozens kidnapped in Kaduna. Family of five kidnapped in Ondo. Finance minister here say Nigeria can't afford to miss out of fourth industrial revolution. And above the headline, we see females performed better in 2021 WSSCE. Why Atiku is not qualified to contest for president Malami tells court. IMF forecasts 2.5% economic growth for Nigeria in 2021. Uh, those are the stories on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Right now on the punch newspapers, a big one there says, panic as bomb hits um, uh, gunmen's hideouts. Federal government goes after IPOB. Fighter jet, ground troops storm Aquaibum Forest, pound hoodlums den. Be ruthless, unleash weapons against IPOB. XIG tells police personnel. And also this morning on the punch, courts uh, shot as judiciary workers begin strike over autonomy. A stakeholders demand renewed onslaught against criminals. Baba replaces Adamu. And also Undo couple, three children. Oshun uh, Chinese miners abducted, guards shot. Poly lecturers vow to continue strike despite meeting federal government. And also, uh, sh uh, well, Japanese victim receives recovered uh, 370,000 yuan from EFCC. Uh, Wyatt releases 2021 exam results with 30.11% pass. Those are the big ones. Uh, okay, Jonathan in Bauchi recalls AIDS deserted him after poll loss. And also, NMPC targets 18-month completion, signs $1.5 billion Port Harcourt refinery repair contract. Those are the ones on the punch this morning. On the Daily Independent, Nigeria loses 45 billion naira jobs to ban on new SIM cards. YX says 2021 WSSC may not hold in May and June, releases 2021 results for private candidates. Why Buhari terminated IGP Adamu's three-month tenure extension appoints Usman Baba as new IGP. Judicial strike Judicial staff strike paralyzes court activities. Edo Jusun shuns action. Education minister fails to avert a substrike. IMF increases Nigeria's 2021 economic growth forecast. Buhari Mon's official driver. Bandits kill eight, injure four in Kaduna. And about the emo jail break, FG to strengthen security at correctional centers nationwide. Assures amnesty if escaped inmates return voluntarily. IGP asked police to unleash full arsenal on bandits. And bandits again set police division in Imo on fire. Moving out to the Daily Sun. Atiku, not Nigerian, unfit to contest election. AGF Malami insists President Buhari loses official driver. And pain as strike paralyzes hospitals, courts and police. Doctors, judicial workers, lecturers strike takes toll. Also, why Adamu was replaced by Usman Baba as IGP. Port Harcourt Refinery, NNPC, an Italian firm, signed $1.5 billion rehabilitation contract. Uh, blood flows on Kaduna Kachia Road. Police and Masab trade blames amid fresh attack in Imo State. On COVID-19, Buhari approves a transition of PTF to steering committee till December. Uh, these are the big ones here on the Daily Sun. And the stories basically repeat themselves on The Guardian yes. and The Nation newspaper. So let's uh, um, invite our senior editor, Mr. Kaide Ladende, uh, to help us analyze the stories. Good morning, Mr. Ladende. Good morning, Aneta. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Good morning, Mr. Okay. Morning to you, sir. So yeah. across all the stories, the newspapers this morning, we've seen the the new the new story the new uh, appointment of Usman Baba as the new IGP and the termination of a uh, IGP Adamu's three month tenure extension. Did you see this coming, and how do you assess the news? 
in 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 fairness, uh, I, as a journalist, I was I have I've actually looked away about the tenure of um, the outgoing IGP. So to a large extent, it was a big shock, or let me not call it a big shock. It was a surprise to see it on the uh, news items because the least you would expect is that let the three months be completed before we talk about whether it's going to be further extended or not. But having said that, I think um, we are done and dusted with the issue of the IG spending beyond time. I'm sure lawyers who are divided on the legality or illegality of his continued stay can have a, bit, a breath of uh, fresh air. Uh, and you know the next thing now is, uh, so how was the manipulation done using the word manipulation by some analyst that, oh, it has to be Baba, uh, why not someone else? But I think we should save ourselves that stress and look at what is Baba bringing to the table. There are myriads of challenges in front of him that he has to tackle head on immediately. Because it's looking like um, a very, very messy situation. It appears nobody's in charge. The same way it's happening in the police force, it's also looking like that in the army. We've had the change of chief of army staff that we cried and panted for for many, for some years now. But have we seen any change? So it, 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 sometimes for us, it's not about the change of persons, but how committed, what is the master plan? Are we taking notes? How sincere are we as a country to take care of, I mean, to handle all these form of criminalities that we are seeing? So I, I, I just feel that it's time that the, the, the citizens begin to you know, make a serious demand on the people in power. Uh, we cannot. Just yesterday, I'm sure it's part of the stories you read, uh, Imo is not yet out of the hook. We had the vice president visit the place. We had the outgoing IG, uh, you know, visited that place yesterday. And all we could hear is that in another town, a police station was raised down. So how do we check this audacity? Is there something more that we don't know? Should we begin to look at intelligence and not just, oh, increase the men, would you be, be uh, shoot at them if they try to harm you? That is very logical. Nobody should criticize that. But I think they should do something deeper. The right. presidency promised us some days ago that it's going to expose the people sponsoring Boko Haram. Uh, the countdown has been on. Was it a sleep or tongue? These are issues that we are interested in because, well, sorry, call it Baba, as part of my language, call it Mama. We may not uh, have any serious change. Well, um, uh, well, <laughs> we've also heard about, um, you know, unveiling sponsors of Boko Haram, you know, for a long time. It's not the first time a statement like that has been made. Let's move on. No, this uh, time they the... said they knew. They wow. didn't say they, they didn't say they would look for it. It's now they said they know them. They will expose their names. Yes, uh, and we, I, I think it's an insult on our intelligence. Let's let's move on now to the um, AGF, uh, Abubakar Malami, and of course uh, Tiku Abubakar's uh, right to run for presidency. <laughs> it's in the news, you know, all over the papers this morning. Once again, saying that he is not Nigerian and should not be allowed to run for president. What are your thoughts? I, I remember very well that that was also an issue uh, in the build-up to about two different elections that Atiku has shown interest in. And um, I, I'm not too sure whether the issue was uh, settled in court or not. But what is most important is uh, people should realize that this is a global village. Um, that should not be a serious issue. As much as it's an issue in the Constitution, if he's truly not a citizen, if he wasn't born here, and if he has um, naturalized in this country, then let's rest the issue. But beyond that, like uh, the sensation media houses will put it, who is afraid of Achiko? You should look at uh, who can fix this country and who cannot fix this country. Let's look at more 
bigger issues than whether it's eligible or not eligible, or could this be a game of some sort so that attention will be on Atiku again? I thought the last set of people that should be talking about 2023 are people in power who should focus on how to deliver on their promises and not who is going to contest from another party exactly. And uh, I, for me, I think it's a big distraction yeah, that is not even worth talking about. Some, something that I also had time. mentioned earlier was, you know, the you know, controversy concerning the role of the AGF here. Um, okay. Is it seeming more like he's playing the role of a party member than he's playing the role of the Attorney General of the Federation? <laughs> I think I will, I'll, I'll be bold to let you know that uh, this time around he's not speaking as AGF, he's speaking as a very strong member of the cabal. This is somebody who is very close to the presidency and um, to a large extent, when he is speaking, you can go to the bank that the president is speaking. So um, maybe you can convince us that this is a constitutional matter <laughs> and therefore the AGF is speaking. But I think that's not what he was appointed for. You should look out for who is taking the issue of constitution for granted, who is obeying the law and who is not obeying the law and interpreting necessary issues and weighing on so many uh, controversial issues of the law and not whether Atiku is a citizen or not. Hmm. So in Akwa Ibom State, according to what we've seen on the Punch newspaper, we saw that uh, it, it reads panic as bombs hit gunmen's hideouts and FG goes after IPOB. It says fighter jets and ground troops storm Akwaibom Forest and pound Hoodlum's den. I think this is a very controversial issue, um, Mr. Lade Inde, because you know they're saying they're going after IPOB members, but this is a local government and a community where you know there are residents, you know, living there, and because of the close proximity of this uh, this particular forest they're talking about, the Ikotakwan Forest, um, we have no idea just if any civilian might have been might have been affected because it's after. Incidents like this, so you have Amnesty International, you know, begin to take stock to see how many civilians were killed in such attacks. So would you say going after IPOB, you know, and, and this action, if this is the best way to go about it? I, I think, um, putting it in context now, you would expect that when you are looking for IPOB members, you should focus on Southeast and not South South. Whatever intelligence the security agents may be relying on, uh, because I understand, I've been to Portaco a couple of times, and I know IPOB has a strong presence, despite the fact that it's in South-South. You know, so there might be some extension there. What I don't understand is why that kind of attack. Um, there have been worse criminal elements from different parts of the country, in specific, a lot of people have been talking about bandits. A lot of people have been talking about uh, uh, the, the many of the, the criminal headsmen now. I have to choose my adjectives now because that has been always controversial. Have we had that kind of bombardment? What kind of efforts are we making? Why are we using sledgehammer to go for hands? How many, are we truly sure that uh, IPOB have started carrying weapons? What exactly is the mission here? And let's not, uh, you know, be sectional, even in handling the security issues. So I totally agree with you that civilians should be considered such things. We shouldn't have any casualty without Amnesty International, even on, of the office of the citizen that you and I belong. We should also raise issue. We should begin to scream and shout. Let's not have another OD cleanup where innocent lives were wasted until now. Nobody seems to be talking about it than just being a reference All right. rather than, you know, maybe even going to ICC. Okay, and also bring, share your thoughts with us on the strikes, you know, that have been threatened and, of course, are currently on across the country. Uh, the Judici Judicial Staff Union of uh, um, uh, Nigeria, of course, have started their strike. Um, the NMA, oh, sorry, the NARD is currently on strike. And, of course, um, uh, Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics is also 
um, uh, kicking off their own strike. Um, it seems very much like the whole country is shutting down mm. at a time mm. when the president isn't even in the country. Mm. I, I don't know how strategic all these associations are uh, looking at these issues. I'm sure they have some credible information for them to be making these demands almost at the same time. Uh, we can always make sense out of some of them, like uh, the issue of uh, the NARD. The, these doctors are not unaware of the phones that people are getting. They are not unaware of the support that the government is even getting. And they are also not unaware that the government officials have not had any reduction. They've not been denied any money. So why should it be the people that are keeping people alive? So I can understand the doctors. The polytechnic is also scary that they are also talking about strike. And ASU is also thinking of, you don't just agree with us and abandon us in the dark. So I just feel that government should understand that the, issue, the business of governance is a serious issue. You don't just talk without following it up. So I, I'm not always saying that government is wrong, government is wrong, but let them come clean. Let them bring out the books and tell them this is all we can afford. And let's know that these associations are going beyond their brief. Then let's turn our tongue and against all these associations rather than it's always government, government, government. Well, I mean, about the, I feel like they've gone to the negotiation table multiple times. Um, the strikes are only happening because the government, or according to the associations, because government has failed to fulfill promises made at the negotiation table. It's not, you know, because there's not been conversations. Um, even if the government says this is what we can afford, if you remember, ASU is also threatening to go back on strike. Even after there were agreements of um, um, about 70 billion that was agreed to be paid to the to the union, uh, revitalization, and of course, um, um, old uh, allowances. So, is it exactly. lack of conversation, or lack of promises, or lack of you know commitment uh, to whatever it is that was agreed? Exactly what I said, Osage. But why we're doing this is as journalists, we are always interested in hearing all sides, not yes. just two sides. And it's unfortunate that government seems not to be updating us on the situation of things. It is just the situation of things at any point in time. If there is no constant communication, if there is no reminder, if there is no updating of any sort, I will feel abandoned. I will feel, you know, disrespected. So what we have on the table that we are talking about is what the associations have told us. And so we are speaking on that ground. But let government tell us what the issues are. Because what we are doing now is to continue with our assumptions that government is disrespecting them. But I think it is a wake up call that we are speaking to the government, whoever is listening. Let the minister speak. Let, even if the minister feels you know, overwhelmed attending to different media houses, let him release statements regularly. Give us an update. Tell us where we are. It, it, it helps these doctors, it helps Nigerians in their conversations to know that this is the true situation. It, they are not our bosses, they are our servants, and therefore they must give us, you know, they must be accountable to what we do. All right. And uh, what do you think about the new, you know, NNPC Technimont deal for 1.5 billion naira, you know, to rehabilitate the Port Harcourt refinery? Is it is it naira now or dollars? Dollars, I beg your pardon. Dollars. Okay, so uh, it's just to let us know that whatever outcry, whatever the criticism we have engaged ourselves in, they made up their mind on what they want to do with refinery. I've listened to different sides of the argument, and uh, I've heard much of uh, people criticizing the whole idea that you don't need such an amount of money to get a, what have you been doing to the refinery all this while. But you know what? <laughs> I don't have a choice than to give them a benefit of doubt. Let's see what they stand to do. I've heard some conversations to say that this is to let Dangote know that you're not going to be the only 
refinery that will be supplying us, uh, you know, petrol in the days to come. The government is saying that whatever it is, we must also be competing. We must also be in the business. So, well, you know what? We will try our best not to forget this issue. We will stay on this issue. We want to see what our $1.5 billion, whether it is through counterpart farm funding or through some direct funding, we will stay on the issue to be sure that there is some form of accountability. Well, um, the current administration may not be in power by the time um, it's time to ask for accountability, but we'll see. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go government is continuing. <laughs> is, is, is continue. Thank you very much, Kaede Ladendi, for speaking with us and for joining us this morning. Um, very pleasure. interesting thank speaking you. with you. Yes, thank you. All Have right. a great day. Stay with us. Uh, today in history, what happened on this day many, many years ago? I'm going back not too far away, uh, 2019, and we're sharing, I'm going to be sharing with you something from Rwanda that I believe Nigeria should also learn from. That's what comes up right after this short break. Yes, and I'll be going back to China. Do you stay with us? <laughs>